Okay, welcome to the 2022 P4 workshop. Uh, in this short talk on Parrot, we're gonna hear about generating P4 code for the application layer. And the speaker is Chaba Georgi. He's a PhD student at ELT in Hungary um, and also a visiting researcher at University of Vienna. Take it away. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm going to present Parrot, an open source library that generates P4 code for the application layer. To begin with, as we probably all know, P4 was originally designed for networking use cases, and it is doing great so far. We can implement new protocols, innovative fields faster than ever. There are also some um, other use cases that require a bit more general computing, like firewalls or in-network telemetry. Uh, moreover, someone may attempt even to use P4 for totally general computation tasks, since the language itself is expressive enough. Those are usually use cases that can benefit from high throughput and or low latency. Uh, for example, sensor data processing or robot control. Uh, but since P4 wasn't really meant to describe such high level tasks, um, the implementation process for this uh, project might be a bit difficult. And I'd like to highlight that uh, the hindering factors we are about to show are because of the slightly out of scope application of P4. We have collected a list of challenges the programmer might face during implementing application layer tasks. Although we are focusing on the application layer, we still need to implement and maintain the underlying protocols. We cannot comfortably um, encapsulate high level data structures we might want to reuse later. Moreover, these use cases are usually stretching the boundaries of the underlying devices. So we might need many tricks and workarounds. Our implementation details might turn into design decisions and our code might become fragmented. And finally, it is very hard to test our solution until everything is in place and we can start processing packets. But let me show you an um, illustrative example. Suppose that we have two sensor values and if A is greater than B, then we want to do something. Of course, the tri trivial implementation would be that we use an if statement. However, depending on the target, we might get an error like this, that, ah, sorry, my friend, but you cannot compare such a large values on this target. Okay, no problem, we are better than that. Let's say that we introduce an additional variable, we subtract A from B, and then we check for an underflow with the longest prefix match. But longest prefix match usually stick and which is a very expensive and scarce resource. So depending on our target and on the rest of the program, we, the compiler might say that, <clears throat> sorry boss, but we are out of TCAM. Okay, no problem, we are still not done. Let's do the masking part of the longest prefix match manually and then check for an underflow using an exact match. And finally, our program compiles. Well, looking at our code and uh, its maintainability, uh, we might say that there must be a better way of doing this. To provide a better offloading experience, we develop an open source code generator library. Uh, one of our key advantages is that we narrow down the scope to application layer logic. Thanks to this, uh, simply Thanks to this, we can uh, make many simplifications and assumptions. Our second princip principle is that we do not uh, introduce a new language. We just create an API for an already existing and popular uh, language. In our case, it is Python, R, Python 3 to keep it uh, easy to adopt. We also want to keep our solution uh, modular and easy to extend. And in later uh, stages, we can even imagine that the programmer has access only to the Parrot user script and the rest of the pipeline is hidden by the manufacturer or by some kind of service provider. To give a quick feel of Parrot, we have implemented a simple number guessing game. At the beginning, we can see an input output like a um, declaration, just like in programming 101. The processing itself is described in a way that mimics uh, other very popular uh, libraries. Uh, 
by leveraging method chaining. Although you cannot see it in this slide, but the generated code is also human readable and easy to modify as required. To summarize, Parrot is an open source code generator library speeding up offloading server functionalities by generating P4 code using a high level API. And besides fast prototyping and reusing existing solutions, later it can be also a good way to getting to know new targets. Finally, I'd like to thank you for your kind attention and don't forget to check out our GitHub repository where we have a very good Hello World tutorial. Great, thank you. Um, I don't know if your co-authors want to join for the Q&A. Um, I see they're on the call. Um, so I have a few questions uh, about this very nice work. Um, the first is, you mentioned um, that Parrot tries to focus on a certain set of use cases. Can you talk a little bit more about what, what applications it's designed to support and how those restrictions are embodied in the Python uh, programming model? Mm -hmm. So basically, at the beginning, we focus only on the simplest use cases that can be described and, OK, this is my input data structure, and this is my output data structure kind of solutions. So basically, at the beginning, we only focus on, let's say, P4-friendly data structures. So what would require, I don't know, a header stack or something more complex that's currently out of scope for us? We, we believe that uh, at the beginning, this offloading server functionality to the network, uh, where we have only scarce resources, that should be very simple. So if it's too complex to describe it with our simple library, maybe it, uh, there is a better way to implement it than in the network. Great. Um, can you say, tell us a little more about how your code generator works? Uh, you have a kind of compiler here. How, what, how does it uh, actually translate these Python uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, statements into, into P4? Yes. So basically, uh, the processing itself is described by using this add method, which basically builds an abstract syntax tree on the fly. And after that, a code generated from this abstract syntax tree. And we have uh, also some very simple semantic checks, but those are really just the basics. So don't assign an integer to a string or vice versa. Because uh, many restric restrictions we have in current targets just cannot be checked in a simple way. For example, in case of a toffee note. And moreover, these are sometimes protected by uh, NDAs. And if we just implement uh, very serious checkings that take into account the limits, for example, the Tofino itself, we will just break our NDA. So is the, is the compiler work by actually taking the logic and the data in the Python uh, program and just lowering those into P4 code, say, for a target like Tofino, or is it doing something, some kind of runtime code generation, or um, you know, is, is it is it generating tables to stand for pieces of the computation that can't be realized in in P four directly? Yeah, um, yes, uh, this uh, last one is really what's P four for. So of course, for simple use cases, that is just a one to one map, one to one mapping. But for complex use cases, for example, what I showed in the presentation, when you want to compare two values, for example, on a very strict Tofino, it's not always an easy task. So in our case, we imagine that, OK, we say that we compare two values. And if it doesn't compile on Tofino, yes, you can add hints to the compiler that, please, use maybe TCAM in the background, or use maybe ashram in the background, and it will generate the tables for the required operations. It. But, but it's, it's definitely a very thin layer. So the, let's call it compiler, uh, runs very fast. So maybe to, to, to dream a little bit, <laughs> what's, what is the sort of most exciting examples you can imagine um, writing in Parrot? Uh, is, there, is there a sort of holy grail uh, kind of, of application that, that you've been thinking of as you've been designing this system? Mm 
Oh, definitely. We, we have a favorite one. Uh, it's in the examples library. Uh, it's for high frequency trading. There is this small UDP um, protocol, and we wrote an example that, um, let's say, facilitates this communication. Right. Um, and on the flip side, <laughs> is there is there a catch? Like this sounds really cool to have to have a high level, you know, Python based API for which the compiler automatically generates, um, you know, efficient P four code that runs in, in hardware at at line rate. Um, so what what's the catch? What are, what are the limitations? Well, the limitations are the same as on the target device. So if you have a very limited target, just because you write your logic in Python, you won't have more flexibility. You can just facilitate the process. So basically, you can uh, realize faster that, OK, here I hit a wall. There is some kind of limitation here, and I need to somehow alter my resource allocations. So yep. it will speed up the process, and you can develop uh, code faster. But uh, it won't solve uh, the problems, and it won't make a target more flexible. Sandra, okay, that, you want to jump in? Yeah. Yeah, let, let me extend it. Uh, so currently, Parrot is in a very early stage. and. Uh, our idea or our motivation was to uh, move uh, computations that require real timeness or low latency to the data plane, to smart NICs or to switches. And uh, the core component of such a solution is based on a code generator. We provide a high level API for the programmers. Uh, they are familiar with Python, so they can describe the the computations easily without uh, um, leaving their comfort zone, let's say. And, uh, and, and the code will be deployed to the target at the end. However, we are not at that point. So the automatic deployment is not part of Parrot at the moment. And uh, there are lots of issues to be solved. For example, how to do interaction between the application that are running on the server side and uh, the other part, which is offloaded to the uh, device. So this is also an open question for the future. Great. Well, I think let's um, let's wrap it up there. Uh, thank you very much. This is really cool work. Um, I encourage people to check out the, the Parrot GitHub site um, and, and play with the tool. Thanks so much, Chapa. Thank you very much.